Do you think the Fed needs to be really, really strident and really, really hawkish here? Is that any way to run an economy to, to, to try to force us into a, a sharp slowdown uh, to keep inflation under control? Do you wish they'd take a light touch? I'm just wondering. Well, we have abundant evidence that the economy is running above potential. And what the Fed needs to do is manage a soft landing where they get growth down, but at the same time that brings inflation down. And that soft landing is, is, is possible. Um, today's report actually gives me pause. I think, I think today's report suggests that the Fed uh, probably has, you know, a fair bit more tightening it needs to do. That's what I mean. I, I don't... Maybe, Mike, maybe I can get Michael... Uh, do, do, you, do you see a supply side solution to this that, that stops short of killing the economy, Michael? Is that any way to, uh, to deal with inflation? It's all we got. I understand it. But it just it seems frustrating to me. We work year after year to try and get demand up, to create uh, new companies, to create jobs, to keep financing costs low, to, to get things humming. Uh, and then when it starts working out really well because of maybe some policy mistakes, uh, we're going to pull the rug out from underneath a, a strong economy. That's that's frustrating, is it not? Is it all we got? It's the only tools we have? It's certainly frustrating. And there's a lot that we need to do on the supply side. We need to make it more attractive to invest. We need to make the economy more dynamic. We need to encourage risk-taking and entrepreneurship. We need to increase workforce participation rate, which would be an increase in labor supply. All those things we need to do. Uh, none of them we're going to be able to do uh, adequately in the near term to get inflation under control. So this really is uh, an issue of demand destruction, not of supply creation. But I think we need to you know, always keep in mind uh, those supply side issues. Look, Joe, I agree with you. We've, we, we've had too little demand. It's been very frustrating. The Fed hasn't been able to get uh, inflation up to its target um, in the years following the 2008 financial crisis. Um, but then you know, we went kind of wildly in the other direction, and President Biden dumped $1.9 trillion of stimulus onto an economy with a two or $300 billion hole into it. And we pushed demand to a level that, that it was unhealthy. And uh, that mess has now kind of been inherited by the Fed. Um, and the Fed, uh, I think, has the challenge described by Wendy. The Fed needs to cool the economy down. Uh, the economy needs to be growing kind of below its underlying potential rate. The objective is to keep it growing, just to keep the growth really slow. That's awfully hard for the Fed to do. Wendy, um, do, you, do you agree with any of that? And, and I, I just begs the question, if we hadn't um, spent a lot more money, and we have spent a lot of money, maybe some of it was warranted after the pandemic, uh, but if we had done something different, not spent that money, cut regulations, uh, made it easier for, for fossil fuel producers to, uh, you know, to, to exploit our great natural resources. If we had done a lot of those, even cutting taxes instead of raising taxes, do you think we'd still need to be raising interest rates? Maybe that would have been the solution. Maybe this is self-inflicted from things like student loan forgiveness, things that, that exacerbate the, the, the bad things about demand. I don't think... Uh... In fact, any of the margins that you just talked about are, are really the active ones here. Um, yes, we had uh, a lot of fiscal support that created a lot of aggregate demand. I, didn't, I don't think aggregate demand was pushed up to unhealthy levels if we'd had an economy that was basically working in the way that we would have expected it to work pre-pandemic. The real constraint that our economy is facing right now is that we have roughly 3 million fewer people in the labor force than we would have expected with pre-pandemic trends. And a lot, of that, a lot of that is labor force participation, but some of that is just we have, you know, the, the pandemic create a lot of, created a lot of death. And that, you know, that has consequences. And so we just have a smaller labor force. We also have less immigration. And that has surprised me, um, the, the effects of lower immigration and, you know, really persistent bad news on labor force participation. These were not givens. And um, they've surprised me. And I think, yes, the Fed just has to take them, take them on board and its information. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.